So I hope you had a wonderful Christmas Day celebration. I know some of you were busy getting things together for families and friends as you entertained them or you went to be entertained. Some of us had some challenges like myself on Christmas Day, but we gave God thanks for the joy and the peace that comes from recognizing the presence of Christ always in our lives. Today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family. Rather than my usual three-point homily, I will look instead at five things, five fingers on one hand. Each of the three things that you would normally hear <clears throat> would be dissipated for the five things that we will look at. And if you forget them, that's why we have the Facebook and website that you can return to later on. The five things we look at quickly are the Holy Family, Daddy slash Husband, Mommy slash Wife, the Children, and finally, a group that we don't often pay attention to, those who are dating or engaged, looking forward to the sacrament of marriage. My dear parents, a question for you. Have you ever forgotten your children anywhere? Don't raise your hands. Have you ever left your children at school or in the mall? I will always remember leaving the cinema one evening and this young teenage girl was on her phone screaming, How could you forget me? How could you leave me behind? It happens. For whatever reason, parents forget their children. My dear children, do forgive them as you grow older. <clears throat> Even Mary and Joseph made a blunder. Parents, for whatever reason, forget their children because one may think the other has the child or one is so focused on what has to be done that it's only when you get home and you ask yourselves, oh, the place are quiet. Somebody's missing. Oh! <laughs> And then you go back for the child. It is true today in the gospel that we hear Jesus chose to stay behind. But Mary and Joseph, even though they were a holy family, they made a mistake. Yes, the holy family made a mistake. One thought that the other had the child, or in this case, the 12-year-old Jesus. Because when they journeyed in the caravan, the males would be in front and the women are behind so it was quite understandable for one to think the other had Jesus. But nobody seems to have communicated. My dearly beloved, what does it mean to be a holy family? We must always remember. We do not become holy of ourselves. We are not holy because of the things we say and do. We are holy because we are called by God, blessed by God, and loved by God. We are holy because God has chosen us and sets us apart for himself. We are holy because we share in the all-holiness of God. In the book of Revelation, we hear the angels and the people gather around the throne of the Lamb and they cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The very holiness that we sing of as we prepare the gifts at the altar. So we who listen to God... We who are loved by God must understand that our holiness comes from a holy God. And we then become participants in the holiness that is God. But what does holiness mean? It means that we get up each day and we try. We try to follow what God desires because that is what pleases Him. But holiness does not mean we won't make mistakes. Mary and Joseph made a mistake. Each thought the other had a Jesus, but that was not the case. Whether it is that the holy family of God will gather in his house, or the holy family at home, or the extended holy family, each time we recognize the saving presence of a holy God in our midst, we also recognize that we too are called to be holy, but we will make mistakes. That's why Jesus came. That's why the Savior has come. To remind us that we are not perfect. We are called to be holy, but we are not perfect people. And so when we make mistakes, don't be afraid to do what Mary and Jesus did. Search for the Lord. Find the Lord. And say, here I am. Because that is what God desires. 
Walk in holiness because of him. Walk in holiness through him. Walk in holiness empowered by his mercy. When we as a family understand that, then we don't need to be afraid of whatever it is we, the holy people of God, must face in life. Some days will be good. Some days we make mistakes. We are a holy people. We're not perfect people. And so when families or individuals and families make mistakes, turn to the Lord, as Mary and Joseph did. Recognize the mistake and strive to do better. My dear brothers, you who are called to be a husband and a daddy, what is expected of you on this feast of the Holy Family? Whether you're king in the house or king in the workplace, whether you are a politician or any leader in any circumstance of life, never forget this fact. God who calls you and gives you the gift of daddyhood, whether natural or spiritual, God expects you, we, to be the face of God the Father. My dear brothers, live your lives so that your wife and children may say to you, Daddy, my dear husband, I see how you love me. I see how you love us. I see how you provide for us. I see how you protect us. I see how you're jealous of us. And so I find God in you. We, my dear brothers, must reveal the face of a loving, merciful, ever-present God to our respective families. But let's not forget, like Joseph in today's gospel, we too will make mistakes. And when we make a mistake, what happens? Let the wife and the children and the family hear you say, I am sorry. Let them see in you a penitential spirit and a willingness and effort to do better. Because when they see that, they begin to not only appreciate who God the Father is, but they begin to have a sincere understanding of who God the Son, the one who has come to save us from all our sins, they begin to understand why we celebrate the feast of Christmas. Never be afraid to stand and remind all in your life who God our Father is. My dear sisters, what is expected of you? Your gift of being a wife and a mother Again, never forget this truth. There is no tighter bond than the one that exists between a mother and her child. That's why scripture says, can a mother ever forget her child? It's impossible. Can a mother ever stop loving her child? It's impossible. And yet scripture goes even further. Even if in her humanity she forgets her child, we read in scripture... I, your God, will never forget you. When Mary said yes to become the mother of Jesus, she was doing something no other woman would ever have the gift of doing. She was going to give birth to the God-man. Every mother, you, my dear sisters, do what no man sitting beside you, in front of you, or behind you can do. You bring a child or your children into the world. And that bond that starts in the womb will last for all eternity. So what's expected of you, my dear sisters? We are told in scripture that every single experience that Mary went through, she pondered everything in her heart. In other words, Joseph, her husband, and Jesus, her son, found in her a woman of prayer. Never fail, my dear sisters, to develop a spirit of prayer and contemplation. Let your husband know that whatever he faces, in the home or outside, you're praying for him. Let your children know and understand that no matter what they experience, you, my dear sisters, are the one who stands in the gap between God and them. I've often shared with you that my own prayer life came as a result of my mom hugging me when I was younger, every night in bed. And I heard her voice, the prayer in my ears. Let them learn from you how to pray, how to contemplate experiences, and how to find the purpose and will of God in their lives. For that is what every single wife and mother is called to do. What's expected of you, my dear children? 
But the younger ones never fail to say, thank you, mommy and daddy, for all that you do. Thank you for feeding me, for clothing me, for bringing me into life. I hope you remember to thank them for the Christmas gift you received. Even if you didn't like it, bite your tongue and say thank you. You won't always get what you want in life, or sometimes if you want it, you have to go and work for it. But always show gratitude to your parents. For the more advanced children, like Jesus, when you become more aware of yourself, you become more fully conscious of your own identity, certain truths will happen. You will begin to clash with your parents. You will begin to say, but I don't agree with you. You will begin to understand that mommy and daddy don't necessarily see things the way I do. And then what is expected of you, my dear children, as you develop your own consciousness and self-identity, be patient with mommy and daddy. They are doing the best they can. Here's a little secret. As you grow older, you will not only appreciate the strengths and gifts of mommy and daddy, you will also see their weaknesses. And as you recognize that mommy and daddy are only all too human, love them with all your might. As you practice kindness and patience with them, the way God, our Heavenly Father, practices kindness and patience to all of us, you will begin to truly understand what it means to appreciate the presence of mommy and daddy each day. Because one day, you're going to have to let them go. So for the moment, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, give thanks for your parents. Be kind to them. Be patient with them. Love them with all your heart. When you have a fight with them, breathe, let it go, recognizing that each day, each moment, is a new beginning. When you recognize mommy and daddy as they present the face of God to you, learn from them. And also, through them, draw close to God. For certainly you too may want to one day either get married or, if God is calling, to become a priest or a religious brother or a sister. When you present yourself to the Lord and say, Here I am, God will reveal his plan to you. We then come to the final group. The group who is dating or who is wanting to date or who is engaged to be married. <clears throat> My dear brothers, do you want a dunce head as your wife? My dear sisters, do you want a rat bat for your husband? There is a worrying concern that we hear over and over again, and it is this. More girls slash young women are graduating from our tertiary institutions than there are boys graduating. What does this mean? It means that our young girls slash women will have a difficult time finding the appropriate partner with which to settle down. Yes, you can love him. Yes, you can love her because of all the other things. But the reality is this. When people attain a certain level of intellectuality, if the other is not near you, you're going to have that real disconnect. And so my dear sisters and brothers who are either dating or planning to date and hoping to get married one day, take time to know who the other is. And ask yourselves, is this the person for me? Never be afraid to bring that person in whom you are interested to the throne of God and say, Lord, is this one mine? Can we relate with each other on all levels so as to be fully compatible? My dear brothers, try. Try. Tell her, I may not be an A student, but I will do what I can. Because maybe by being an A student baby, 
I will win your love for me. And then you can go even further. Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about the science book. Don't know much about the French I took. But what? But I do know that I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what a wonderful world this would be. Hopefully you mean it, and hopefully she will see it. My dear sisters, a little secret for you. Every man likes to feel special. You can't change a man, no matter how hard you try. You can't tame a man, no matter how hard you try. But you can make the man feel special and loved. So don't be afraid to say to him, I love you. I honestly love you. I honestly love you. But don't just say it. Let him feel it. For every man who feels special will want to respond. Every man who feels that, yes, she puts me on a pedestal a little higher than other men will do what he can to make you happy. Because that is what marriage is about. To make the other feel so special that you don't need to look anywhere else. And as we journey together as a holy family of God, once we say, Lord, guide me. Once we say, Lord, give me the grace. Rest assured that the God who fulfills his promises by sending his son Jesus will be the one who gives us all the graces we need to carry on in the journey of life. May we, beloved, as a holy family of God, choose to listen, to respond, to walk in the holy ways of God, so that we will be blessed in the here and the now, and we will look forward to eternal life that is to come. To him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever.